Before we start this event, let's take you through a short and official video of G20. to shape a common global future. India leads the way with its own golden period of inclusive and sustainable growth. The Amrit Kaal. A new era signifying India's development from its 75th year of independence to its 100th. Special Secretary G20 India and formerly Ambassador of India to Mexico, High Commissioner to New Zealand and Chief Passport Officer Government of India, esteemed uh, Vibhash Kumarji, former Executive Director Indian Oil Corporation Limited and our esteemed Professor of Practice, esteemed uh, Kumod Kumarji, Chief Administrative Officer and CEO of CEIMP BIIF. Uh, when I spoke to Patna College uh, this morning, I studied there for two years for my intermediate, many years back during 81 uh, to 83 period. So it was a very emotional uh, uh, and nostalgic uh, moment to go back to the place where you have done 11th and 12th and return after a few years. So here I am uh, in uh, Patna to uh, have discussion with the Bihar government for organizing a G20 meeting in the next few months. The management principles are applied in day-to-day -day government work. And how uh, management practices can help in achieving uh, targets and objectives uh, in a government operations. But before that, let me give you some background of uh, what is G20, so that it's uh, easily understood by As it has already been explained by uh, Professor Rana Singh, G20 is a group of 20, 19 countries and one European Union. The history of uh, G20 goes back to uh, late 90s when there were some uh, economic and financial crises in South East Asia. And you are a student of uh, the management, so you would know that in uh, mid 90s, starting 97, 98, uh, some of the uh, tigers of South East Asia like Malaysia, Indonesia and some other countries, they were facing monetary crisis around 96-97. So it was during this time that some of the finance ministers of Western countries, here Western means G7, group of seven most industrialized countries, and you might have read somewhere. These are US, Canada, uh, Japan, UK, France, uh, Italy, uh, and, and Germany. So these seven countries are topmost economies of the world. Until that time, the G7 called shots so far as the financial decisions of the world are concerned. After the Second World War, three institutions came up. The United Nations, you already know, 1945, and the World Bank and IMF. But these were the creations of the Second World War, and the people who are there, they were generally, they emerged victorious in the Second World War. 
1945, there were roughly 50, 60 countries, independent countries in the world. Today we have 200. So one question uh, should come from you. How can the same uh, group of people continue to decide the future, economic or financial future of the world? So G7 was not not exactly competent, I mean it was not widely representative of the world to deal with the economic crisis. So they brought in some 20 countries, 20 leading economies of the world. 